So in today's video, I decided to go back a little bit. I've made a video about skin tones a little while back. And I kind of want to recapture and I guess refresh your guys' memory a little bit about how to work with the skin tones. Now the first thing you always need to remember that there is no magic solution in color grading making crappy skin tones look amazing and you know glamorous and blah blah blah. When you shoot your video you always have to pay attention about things like makeup, about things like a little bit of red blush on your cheeks and stuff like that because down the line if you really want to get those high-end cinematic very you know rich skin tones you always need to keep that in mind to put all those things together in the same concept because sometimes uh, people come into me you know with the DSLR footage and they're asking me to fix the skin tone if the material been shot really poorly there is nothing you really can do in post of course you know there's a plugins like that face tracking plugins the face refinement that the ventures all have but the problem is with that plugin that to a certain point it looks fake you know if your material is not prone let's say to have a nice makeup on the cheeks or stuff like that just adding to it through a plugin basically you painting the skin in a certain color like red kind of looks off so before we jump into color grading part remember when you shoot keep those things in mind so let's jump into the venture resolve and we're going to talk a little bit more about it Okay, let's talk about getting a really nice skin tones inside the Vinci Resolve. And before we start, I want to say special thank you to Koye Moons. I hope I pronounced your name correctly for giving me this clip for a color grading tutorial. I'm going to put it on the screen for you guys. And the first thing when we're going to start color grading is obviously to balance everything we have. So I'm going to bring the scopes that the Vinci Resolve have, the default scopes. That way you guys can see and i'm going to create a new node okay i'm gonna put it right here and i'm gonna put this one exposure that way you guys can follow along and see basically what's going on all right so our exposure looks pretty good but i kind of want to crank it down a little bit i don't want to put too much down and just a little bit to kind of give it a nice little startup contrast okay so that looks good let's go back to the first node and in this one i'm gonna do white balance okay and in the following node i'm gonna do saturation <clears throat> so those two nodes saturation and white balance is gonna be a little bit i want to say essential in our color grading because depending on saturation i actually want to tweak the white balance in a certain way so what I'm going to do, let's say this is a music video and I kind of want to make colors pop nice and vivid. Okay, so I'm going to crank up saturation pretty much almost all the way. Okay, and if you don't know where saturation is, it's right over here. I'm using my panel, that's why you can't really see what I'm doing. Alright, so saturation again right over here. And let's go back into white balance. And white balance is right over here the temperature and tint okay again i'm going to be using my panel to dial everything how i want it because it's a little bit more comfortable like that okay so let's go a little bit more down okay i think like that looks great let's see okay and just to kind of be safe let's play with the tint and see if the tint can give us anything interesting because sometimes tint actually works pretty well okay so minus nine looks really cool let's check out before and after okay all right very nice i really like the result let me create a new node and i'm gonna do alt p parallel and that's where we're gonna start doing all our tweaks so first of all i want to do a contrast okay i want to do more contrast okay and the contrast is right over here. Again, I'm going to be using my panel to kind of to kind of dial it up or down. Okay, I want it to be very contrasting. And then I'm going to use pivot to sort of play around with the midpoint of that contrast where I want it to be. Okay, I kind of like it like that. Again, let's check it out before and after. As we can see, we actually punched in quite 
a bit. Okay, let's do full screen and let's do the whole thing before and after. So that's already looking really good. Now here's a very interesting thing and this is why I like personally working a lot with the parallel mixers. Uh, let me select those two over here and create a compound, basically make it like a single node. And why I like the parallel mixer that I can basically tap into compound node information if I need color. Let's say I'm creating a look or whatnot. And I usually like to keep my accurate colors in the beginning of color grading. That way I can use them later as a reference. So what I mean by that, let's just say I'm going to do a look. Let's say client want to have a little crazy look. And let me kind of, I don't know what would be crazy look. Something, I don't know, let's see. Let's see, something different like that. Okay, so as you can see, that's pretty radical from what we had. And let's say they also want to have a very clean skin tones. So if I'm going to do another parallel node, and I'm going to call this one skin, I actually now have access to a clean node. What I mean by that, that the clean nodes over here are not affected by any of my adjustments. Rather than, for example, if you create parallel node, this node going to be affected by your last um, tweaking, whatever you've done here. So if you have the green skin over here and you want to tap into that, you're not going to be able to get the clean skin back. You're going to be tapping into the green skin. Anyways, uh, I'll, color, I'll, I'll cover it uh, in a future tutorial in more depth. That way you guys can really know the difference. So, skin. Let me go into selection, just like that, okay? I'm using selection range right over here, and I'm basically clicking kind of on, on the middle of the skin where I think looks kind of average. Now, here's a trick to skin selection. A lot of times, whenever you have sort of squares like that, no matter what you're going to do, your skin going to look like crap. So one thing what you can do, you can... Uh, extend it a little bit to cover the range which in our case actually works very well and what we also can do just to sort of not to worry about anything else but the skin we can do a garbage mask like that sort of feather it okay that's another really cool practice anyways so as we can see I still don't have a good skin selection we still have a lot of noise going on and what I can do is try to play with saturation. So let's tweak the saturation and see where that's going to take us. Okay, low saturation doesn't do anything. Let's try high saturation. Okay, high saturation also doesn't do anything. We still have those little squares. Let's try Luma. Okay, so Luma seems to be affecting something, but it's not skin, so I don't really care. Now, I guess... Our answer lays down into hue panel. What we can do, and basically that's how you get a very nice clean softkin selection, is to soften your selection as much as possible without tapping really into other colors. Like for example here we start tapping into purple which is not good. And let's see if we can move it around. We kind of can eliminate that. So let's play it back. Okay, that looks good, but we still have a little bit of noise going on. What we can try to do, and I'm not personally a fan of it because I don't think it's doing a really good job, is to use a feather tools right over here, minus and plus. Like, for example, if I'm going to grab plus, and I'm going to try to apply it over here, now we can see it pretty much grabbed a lot of stuff, what I don't need. And if I'm going to use minus, we pretty much back to square one so that's why i like to do a manual selections better because i think it gives the most cleanest result okay so let's go back here let's make it a little bit wider okay again right over here let's soften it let's do a lot of feathering okay and this one i guess we can go like that and use a feather tool to make a soft selection all right so i think in our case this is going to be a really good selection 
what we also can do just a little bit don't crank those things up too much is to add a little bit white and a little bit black depending on what it's going to do on the screen and we can do a little bit of blur radius it sort of helps out to blend in things a little better all right so now we have a perfect skin selection right over here okay and we can do multiple things for example we can do a little bit extra contrast just on her face okay let me go a little extreme so you guys can see okay again we can do a little bit of pivot so let's check it out really quick before and after that's great we can also do another um, temperature adjustment if we want to make her face a little bit warmer or go back to a little bit cooler tone we can obviously do that now with a clean selection or we can use this opportunity and do a little beauty pass which is to a certain extent works very well if you have close-up shots like that if you're gonna dial down a mid-tone details just a little bit you can see it's smoothing the skin just a tiny bit so before and after okay so that looks great and we have a little problem going on we have a lot of noise to begin with and I believe this was shot with black magic camera and it's completely normal to have a noise in the shadows and I personally prefer to clean the noise before I'm doing any kind of uh, beauty adjustments like that because you get much cleaner result so how we can do this we can create a new note and by holding control we can actually swap the notes like that okay and let me call this one NR noise reduction and depending on how much noise you have we can choose a different tools like for example here let's do a little stronger one okay and we can see it pretty much cleaned everything and we can get rid of chroma noise as well okay let's take a look before and after very good job by the noise reduction so now we have a very clean shot and completely perfect skin if I zoom in we have nothing playing around we have no crazy dancing noise going on let's play it back actually let me do a full screen for you guys so you all can see we don't need this thing anymore all right let's play it back and this is what we have a very nice clean skin so remember next time you're gonna be shooting always make sure to have a very good shot in camera before you are actually gonna try to fix something in pose because it's very important getting the cleanest possible result and again we can extend this shot a little bit and add like a let's say a lighting effect excuse me right here okay uh, what's going on here let me we have our notes slightly messed up but it's okay really quick we're gonna reconnect everything all right just like that okay perfect so lighting control P or I'm sorry alt P another parallel node and let's say I want to use light like this let's kind of do a little cheesy cheesy lighting effect let's say I want to only do highlights okay a very nice soft feathering and we can use curve or any other adjustment tool to kind of give it another little extra bump to entire thing okay just like that all right and check it out before and after before and after all right let's see let's go back to the selection feather it more and now we have very nice extra lighting in our shot even though it's a very small adjustment look how much difference it makes okay check it out so before and after very nice bump all right thank you guys so much for watching make sure to subscribe and i'll see you guys in the following videos